Good morning, Marlene and Gavin. Good morning from Glasgow, Scotland. Uh, as you know, I am here at the COP26, which is everything climate change. Uh, world leaders and technocrats in environment in climate change, they're here. Uh, they've converged in Glasgow to discuss uh, the impacts of climate change and also to hold leaders accountable in terms of having them uh, know no more talking action. That is what they're asking for. Again, morning from Glasgow uh, in, well, actually it's afternoon here right now. What are some of the things that you have, uh, or some, based on what you've attended so far, what um, what have you been seeing? What have you been hearing? What what is the feeling just on the ground uh, live at uh, in Glasgow? Well, um, well, I arrived yesterday um, on Monday afternoon, uh, closer into the evening. Um, that was day one of the World Leaders Summit. Um, the Prime Minister John Bersenio made his uh, speech then, along with uh, many of the other leaders. And essentially the theme here for uh, this COP26 is that there's need for action to take place. So um, what we saw, uh, or what we've seen, and you can see it on the screen right now, is that there are all these pavilions that have been set up here at the Scottish event, the Scottish event center um, here in Glasgow. And basically what has happened is that you have all these organizations from financial institutions to um, countries, as well as uh, you have organizations such as 5Cs, the World Wildlife Fund, um, um, also CARICOM. And basically they're making presentations. These are side events that are happening and they're making presentations to anyone that would listen uh, about what the issues of climate change are and how it has been affecting their respective countries and their response to the mitigation and adaptation uh, measures when it comes to uh, climate change. We know that, like I said, the world leaders are here. Um, US President Joe Biden, uh, we were able to get a, a snap of him as he exited a meeting this morning as well as uh, Prime Minister uh, John Bersenio. And we did get an interview with him right there and then uh, when he exited, we'll have that for you shortly. But outside of these bigger meetings, uh, there are a lot of side events that are happening uh, where technocrats and the experts in climate change are really discussing everything climate change from the forest to marine, uh, uh, terrestrial land, uh, as well as uh, waters, oceans, and really to look at whether the country can, whether these countries, whether the world uh, can achieve that 1.5 degrees, uh, that increase in climate temperature, in the world temperatures of 1.5 degrees. Um, the projections are that within the next three days, sorry, three years, we will reach that 1.5, and by the 2030, it will be to 2.7 uh, degrees. That's that's the concern right now. And so there is need for clear mitigation to take place and mitigation from the larger countries. And so that is um, where countries like Belize and experts from Belize are really coming forward and saying, no, you know what, it's no longer, um, it's no longer time to really talk but time to take action uh, about this issue of climate change. I, I, I know that you have uh, some interviews that, that you've already been conducting and, and we look forward to those. But for a moment, uh, just, just lay out for us the scale. This is said to be one of the largest uh, COPs, one of the largest conferences that we have seen even in, in the midst of a pandemic because it is such an urgent issue across the globe. Uh, lay it out for us what, what, what it's like. All right, let me break it down, guys. Um, I, I believe I had sent, uh, I forwarded some images, but 
to enter into the facility onto the campus it takes almost two hours thousands of persons are trying to get in and they have strict measures security as well as you have to do covid tests uh, rapid tests daily they are self-administered but and you register it online and that has to happen every day before you can uh, even come to the campus because you won't be able to get access unless you've provided proof of uh, a negative uh, result. The compound itself is huge. Uh, pavilions have been created all over and they have separated all these leaders uh, from the media, from the experts. Now, after we got in, uh, and the word underground, and I can uh, be uh, honest with you guys, is that the word from several persons that have spoken to the word underground is that while this is the biggest that they've seen, um, there is room for better organization uh, in terms of the free flow of people. But I'm guessing that it's because of the pandemic. Uh, this is why there are all the security measures that have been put in place. Um, right now, I am in the media center. Uh, there were at least 3,000 um, media reps that have been accredited, and that's because um, the space is limited even so. And so we're, we're trying to do our best to, to get to these leaders, to, to find out, to get a pulse of where these countries are um, with climate change now. And uh, as you said, the, the world leaders uh, made the presentations yesterday, uh, countries like Belize, and uh, I, um, Gavin and I were talking about uh, Prime Minister Motley, Mia Motley from Barbados, um, you know, did their best to plead the yeah. case on, on what we are experiencing. Uh, what's been the reaction, even amongst the, the other journalists, uh, hearing from small island states that are so severely affected? Really, they're shocked. They're surprised. Um, I think that um, one of the things that we that have been able, I've been speaking with several of them, and one of the things is that they have not experienced, at least those from the bigger countries, they have not experienced what we are experiencing. And the Prime Minister, in an interview that I did with him earlier today, uh, went into details, and he did uh, uh, highlighted that in his uh, speech on monday where he said that it's these smaller countries that have been uh adversely affected and there needs to be some kind of work done to ensure that we survive um climate change i think that's one of the themes that they have here and it's plastered all over that the ambition is to survive this thing and so that is where they are no more are we, there's a call to action uh, on that Paris Agreement that was signed five, six years ago. Absolutely. And uh, Duane, we're told that you caught up with uh, Prime Minister Brisenio shortly, uh, well, I should say a few hours ago. <laughs> yeah, we did. Uh, it, he was actually leaving a meeting, uh, a meeting that uh, world leaders had uh, attended where they signed off on an agreement uh, the full details of that agreement have not been uh, forthcoming, or they haven't provided us with that as yet. But due to logistics, of course, we were kept at bay. Uh, but we were still able to, to catch the Prime Minister as he exited uh, along with Pat Steck, uh, Stuart Leslie. And we have that interview for you now. Uh, if you want, you can run that yes. interview. We know that we certainly working on that one. We know that they are heard. Do you believe they listen to your message? Well, we hope so, and I think that more than ever, people are understanding how important it is. I mean, Mother Earth is dying, and unless we do some critical changes, Belize is doing its part. We have over thirty percent of our land under protection, and by twenty twenty six, we are going to have thirty percent of our oceans under protection. But we need financing, and this is where the developed countries have to come in. Are they doing enough? They're not doing enough, and that's the point. How it's does about that make time. You feel? Well, it gets you angry because here, for instance, small countries like Belize, we have been doing our part. We are protecting our, our, our reserves, our land, our waters. But yet, the bigger countries who have developed themselves, 
and living a lavish lifestyle are in effect telling us we can't do what they have done before because we have to protect Mother Earth. Well then, give us the funding to be able to do that. Give us the funding so that we can help our people to get out of poverty. Poverty is the greatest threat to the environment and the developed countries need to understand that. And what does the climate Actually, crisis mean for your country? Yeah. Well, what is happening is that because of global, of the, the changes in temperature, um, many of our islands are going to disappear. Some of them have already disappeared. We had a, a bird sanctuary that has completely disappeared and the hurricanes are becoming more intense and we could be doing decades of good work and with one hurricane it can be um, destroyed. So your message to China, to America, to the they EU, need to, to the do UK? More. They need to do more, they need to give us the funding and they also have to be able to do their part in reducing their emissions so that we can reduce the temperatures, the temperature on planet Earth. So, so in terms of... Here? Well, I, I'm, you know, of course, he, he's also included, and um, he was talking about it yesterday, but uh, I hope that that talk can be translated into action. Prime Minister, Sorry, how do you respond to the criticism that these are merely discussions, merely meetings, and nothing Action needs happen. to be taken. Well, the, it is um, a merited criticism that, you know, we've been talking and talking um, for decades, we've been talking that is, this is going to happen, and it is happening now, and I'm hoping now that these countries now have awoken and realizing that all of us are in this boat together. It's not just the small countries, but even the developed countries. Thank, Thank you, you sir. very much. Thank you so much. There you have it. Uh, Wayne. So I'd love yeah. to hear what happened yeah. when Prime Minister walked away from that interview. I heard some international reporters throwing in some questions there. Yeah, uh, essentially we... Um, we were able to grab him and, and they took advantage of that uh, to get a comment from the um, The thing is, is that we've seen where Caribbean countries have come out strongly because they are part of these small island development states that have been uh, adversely affected by climate change. And in Belize alone, because really the issue is you can see the effects of climate change in Belize as it is. Our coastlines, uh, our coastline has changed over the years. Land is washing away. We've seen where farmers can't plant the way they used to, they used to because you know what was, what was traditionally the rainy season is not really happening. It, we're experiencing more drought and all of that. And so we have experienced climate change. We, we, we're, we're experiencing it. And the reality is that these bigger countries, these more industrialized countries uh, like the US, like China, the fact is that they have not, uh, and that's the sentiment that has been shared, they have not adhered or they have not made good on their commitments that were made back in 2015 for the Paris Agreement. And so now the call is being made to them if nothing changes, we, the smaller islands, have been affected and we will continue to be affected. And I believe that is why we've been getting these strong statements from leaders from the Caribbean, Mia Motley. We were able to get a, a, a shot of her as she left um, this meeting. Uh, but unfortunately, she didn't stop to, to provide us with any kind of comment. Um, but Prime Minister Bresenio said what he said, and rightfully so. Uh, we are experiencing uh, the effects of climate change and something needs to be done. All right. I know that throughout today, there are other meetings that will be taking place. Marlene and Gavin, uh, today, actually, a uh, signing will take place between, uh, let me give you the exact info on that. A signing will take place uh, between the, the signing of the Belize Project Finance for uh, permanence, it's between an MOU that is being signed between WWF, uh, TNC, and the government of Belize. The Prime Minister will be there, and we will try to get uh, some more comments from him on that. Also today, the World Leadership, Leadership Summit uh, is closing, so they will have some closing speeches and some non-state actors uh, that will be summarizing the, the key outcomes, so I will try to have that 
uh, updates for us uh, for you guys later today uh, and maybe even in the news cup. Yes. But uh, there's a lot of side inside events that are taking place. And that's not even to mention um, a huge protest that is expected to have yeah. uh, upwards of 50,000 persons. Um, that is set for um, this Saturday. Uh, there okay. are some people who believe that um, it's just a pop shop and nothing is going to change that. So these persons will be coming out uh, in the center of Glasgow to really just uh, demonstrate that and, and protest that. All right. Well, Dwayne, we thank you for taking the time out to give us a bit of an update this morning. And we look forward to uh, tonight's recap as well. Uh, do stay safe, stay warm. <laughs> and thank you once again. <laughs> it's, it, uh, honestly, it's been cold, Marlene. It's, yeah. it's freezing. But <laughs> I'm working through it. <laughs> we, we the Caribbean people, I know where you are, even if it's 50, it's cold. All right, thank you very much. And did you, I know that you've been spending most of your time at the conference, but have you, have you gotten a chance to hear any of the famous Glasgow accent? Uh, uh, listen, I, they're, they're talking about, um, we, 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 we say Berg and not Burr. And we, you know, it's a lot of different things. Uh, uh, but we found some. I've found some friendly faces already, uh, some people from the Caribbean that I've um, networked with in the past. And then also um, there's this, uh, uh, um, a conservationist uh, guy, Chris Minty, okay. uh, who has worked at Las Cuevas. Um, he lived and worked at Las Cuevas um, in the Chicken Bowl for seven years, yeah. along with Rafael Montanero. And he uh, reached out and has been um, a, a, a good help. Um, getting us around the, uh, and so outside of this uh, the official uh, meetings that will be happening here there are, there's this website that has all these um, events that are happening yeah. outside of the COP26 well it really um, does but help we're, that we're you, working with it sorry I was going to say it really does help that you have Belize plastered on your mask so anybody who recognizes Belize will know where you're from Dwayne, of course, uh, we, we yeah. look forward to future updates. This is just day one. Uh, but thank you for letting us know uh, what's been happening so far. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. All right. And with that, we're going to go ahead and take our final break. And when we come back, Gavin, will you please tell us what's trending? We definitely will. So uh, please stay tuned. <laughs> 